What's up, everybody? And good afternoon, as it may be. Alrighty. In the past, I have shown and demoed one of these Nell Luso bikes before. Now, this customer is going to use it because he wants the rack and the basket, obviously. That's usually why people choose these because it is hard to carry something. If you don't have a rack and a basket or you get tired of backpacking everywhere you gotta go. As an addition, I do believe this customer will be pulling a trailer because it is nice to have a trailer when you're going to the store. You can get more items. If you're doing home improvement, you can put your gallons of paint in the trailer. Don't have to worry about dropping them all the way home, etc. So anyway, let me share a couple of the upgrades on here, which are not performance upgrades. I'm all about longevity and functionability. I don't care if the bike goes 105 miles an hour. I do care that when the customer comes out to use the bike, it starts, runs, and parts aren't falling off of it. So anyway, most of my bikes, I put 50cc engines on. It's the street legal way to go. Doesn't get anybody in trouble, even if they're out half full throttling it and are seen, the police will usually leave you alone. But in this case, we have upgraded to an 80cc engine. The red powder coat engine is just a bonus for looks because it does help improve the look of the bike a little bit, I must say. Also, we went with the frame-mounted spring tensioner. I know a lot of people like the ones that go here. I'm just not a big fan of those because you got your little wheel down here and your spring, and every time you start it, it wrenches out your spring, and there's no way to stop that because when you start your bike, the bottom of the chain is pulling the motor, if you will, to make it rotate to start. When you're driving the bike, the top of the chain is pulling you down the road. So every time you release the clutch, the bottom part of the chain smacks down, engine starts, goes back to its normal just going for a ride. That's just a brief description. I'm not getting all scientific about it. But anyway, I am a fan of the frame mount tensioner. Now these had the same problem as the ones up on the engine, but how I corrected that, even on my own bike, when you used to start these, it would stretch this all the way down. I mean, that dude goes way down there and makes this little spring stretch way up here. So, to cure that, I rotated the wheel, seeing exactly how much movement my tensioner had, and then I drilled and tapped and put a stop in there. So when the bike starts, this goes against the stop, as you can see, that's all the play my chain gets, the bike starts, and then it's back to pivoting to keep my chain snug. So that's a little description of why I did that there. Also, like I said, this gentleman will be pulling a trailer. So I made him a couple other mounts like that that he can put on his other bicycles. No matter what he's riding, he can just slide the tongue on his trailer and go to the store, the hardware store, or wherever it is he sees fit that he wants to pull something. So other than that, I just thought I'd share this little guy. The rest of it is built with my standard build operation, if you will. I always, with coaster brake, use the aluminum hub. It just guarantees less chain problems on the coaster brake bikes. 99% of my bikes also have the front welded steel motor mount to make sure the u-bolts don't stretch through time or the clips or whatever so the person has a problem when the motor shifts and kicks the chain off that's always a huge pain 
other than that, it's pretty standard. Just up the horsepower a little bit so he can uh, have a couple extra cc's to pull his trailer. If you're a construction person and you're going to haul brick, why would you get the four-cylinder engine and work it to death when you can just step up and either get the V6 or just a V8, depending on the weight you're pulling, and uh, not work your poor truck to death? Concept the same for a bicycle. Even though you have your trailer, you got to pedal a little bit and get the weight moving, but this little engine will work a lot less than the 50cc pulling a trailer, depending on how much you pull a trailer. All right. Unfortunately, the weather has not been too friendly in the video department. Couldn't get a little sun out here. It's either been raining or cloudy. I think we'll get a break sometime. One other little tidbit that I will share, and I've done it in other videos, if you can see inside there, we machine out the sprocket so you can keep your bearing, dust cap, and seal on the rear wheel hub. A lot of people get rid of that, and I'm not saying you're gonna, that's gonna guarantee you get an extra 3,000 miles out of a wheel, but I am guaranteeing that it makes it last a lot longer if you leave the dust cap on there, keep the grime out and the grease in. That's just a friendly little FYI. All right, that's pretty much what I got for today. Got a couple more bikes to get in there and build, so I'm going to get on it. Hopefully everybody has a good afternoon, and maybe the sun is shining where you live. What can I say? No video would be complete without a little demonstration of it actually running like a toaster. Voila, there you have it, what can I say? All right, once again, take care of yourselves out there, and uh, I will see you with the next informative video, hopefully.